Welcome to Bubbly Brown After Dark. I am here with Pamela and I'm here with Jennifer, two main characters of this amazing web series. How are we ladies doing tonight? We're doing fine. I'm good. How about you, Pamela? I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. <laughs> Well, I'm super excited to be discussing this episode, which is episode three, because a lot of things are going on in this episode. Um, I want to start with you, Jennifer. You play Kimmy, correct? Correct. You play Kimmy, and little signs are showing up with her her um, relationship. It's, it's geared towards a little abusiveness. Why, why do you think that she is staying in this relationship, and what... What would you do if the shoe was if, in real life? What would you do if the shoe was on your foot? Well, I believe that she's staying in the relationship uh, because she doesn't know how to get out. I think that uh, from other friends that I have that had unfortunately have had the same similar experiences like Kimmy has, um, it's like a psychological thing that happens to them where they stay stuck and they just feel like they cannot be saved. Um, right. If I was in Kimmy's shoes, I will reach out to close friends and I will have to have them coming, pry me out. I wouldn't be available to, to leave on my own. They, were gonna, they will have to come and rescue me. I, I cannot rescue myself because I'm stuck psychologically. I'm, I'm beat up mentally and physically, you know? Do you, do you think her friends um, are going to find out later on? Are you going to give us a little, a little um, hint? No. You know what? I don't know. You got to talk to Tamala about that. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I tried to slide up in there to get, get the juice for further episodes because... Um, I, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> because, it, because, you know, domestic violence is something that um, people um, experience every day. Right. And especially during right now, we're in this um, COVID corona quarantine and there are people who are living with their abusers right now Pamela why did you think that this was um something that should be important to the storyline um I guess like for me Kimmy is the epitome of what we see as a strong woman she's successful and she's always there for other people but there's so many people that are also suffering in silence and a lot of times we covet other people, they want their life and what they present to the world without really knowing what the hell they're actually going through. And so for me, it was more about, about that, about showing that it may look beautiful on the outside, but there's something that is going on behind the scenes that we need to, that we need to be aware of and also fix. Like, why is Kimmy, and also Kimmy, this is a new boyfriend. Like, in episode one or two, she said that this is a new, a new situation, yet she mm -hmm. is already kind of like wrapped in this toxic like codependent thing happening you know and i, I want to know why that is stupid like why why do we do that to ourselves you know do you think well you as jewel do you think jewel knows about it at this point or do you think that jewel is just so wrapped up in finding out about her soulmate that she is oblivious to kimmy's um, I guess, behavior, because a lot of the times when people are in abusive relationships, certain things about them are a little off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think Jewel is aware at all. She okay. thinks that Kemi is like the shit, that she would never tolerate anything like that. So she's just like not even aware at all. And I, and I think Kemi herself is kind of like, what the hell? <laughs> right. I think, what do you think, Jennifer? I mean, <laughs> it's, it's like she's asking for help, but with, uh, in, with using other words. Right. Um, she's asking for help somehow. Like, I hope you, you see me and notice my pain. Hello, can you see me even though I'm smiling at you? You know, can you right. me, please? But, you know, at this moment, nobody acknowledges that. So... Do you think that um, when she called Jewel to come meet the new bay, that she already was aware that something was like a little weird with Mike? Yeah, that, that phone call was definitely a little hint there. 
but you have to mm -hmm. learn how to read between the lines. And if you're, you've never right. been exposed to those kind of things, you're not aware of what's happening with your friend that is a strong friend that is always happy and is always defending other people, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. When, um, another question that I had for the episode, when, to touch on that, when she invited her to meet her new bae, do you think that, um, do you think Kimmy was, I won't say that she was looking for help or was she just feeling like she just needed some kind of support system for her being in the relationship that she was in with Mike? Or did she just miss her best friend and just wanted her to be out and about? That's a really good question, actually, because you, it, it can go both ways. But for my own feeling, uh, she definitely called her friend because she needed that support. She needed that friend to be around there with her when she was with this person at the bar. You know? What are you thinking, Tamla? No, I mean, like, that's interesting. You know, I think that's great as an actor that she had that backstory. When I was writing it, I don't think I was thinking that. I mean, I didn't, maybe I didn't think that deep about it. I wanted us to see that he was a little bit possessive. Um, and so I think that's true to Jennifer that she already said, okay, this was the first time that he'd be like clocking her phone and who she's calling. Like, who does that? <laughs> Can I live? <laughs> Can I make a phone call? <laughs> I mean, you, you could tell that she was already scared of him and, and in pain when he goes around and he hugs her like this and then right. like, nobody, nobody, babe, nobody. It's like he, that he, should he, be a Right. She doesn't even say, oh, I just got my friend you. I want her to come. No, she's like, nobody. Right. That's true. That That's shook true. me up in It shook me up in the episode because I just felt like when Mike was questioning her and she, you know, her being from, you know, just the sense that I get from her is that she came from a strong family. She, you know, she's very secure in herself. But when he was just like, you know, where are you at, blah, blah, blah. She didn't really even have a smart comeback. Mm -hmm. So to me, it just felt like this has been going on for a minute and it's just not, it's not something that's just starting where she's like, wait a minute, maybe he's like having a bad day or maybe he's, you know, he tripping. I'm gonna give him this one. She was really like, uh, was if I tell him I'm with my friends, what is he going to say? Is he going to tell me that I can't be my friends anymore? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or like, well, why are you calling her for? We're, I'm here with you. Why do you need her for? Or he might forbid her for being out and about because, you know, when you get outside influences, it could be a whole thing. And that's what they do. They isolate you. They Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Tamla, I want to touch on Gabe. <laughs> yes. Yes. I want to touch on Gabe. In the questions and in, in person, <laughs> he's so fine, like so fine. And just the way that he interacts with, uh, interact with Jewel and with Kimmy saying that, you know, this was a good man. Y'all were perfect for each other. Like, what's, what's he? And then when he walks in and he's just like, I knew you would be here. Like, I felt your, <laughs> I felt you here. I almost passed out. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm getting hot already just thinking about him. Oh my God. Oh my God. Perfect, 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 perfect actor for this because he just, he's just something else. But anyway, how do you, it's clear that Jewel is still checking for Gabe. She did not give me, I'm saving myself for my soulmate. She gave me, you know what? If you gave me a little bit, um, you know, I might, you know, I might think about it again. So how, how do you think that Jewel is going to have a clear mind with something like Gabe is here and Caleb is, she doesn't even know where he's at. Yeah. How is she going to do that? Well, she wow. <laughs> it's hard. And that's also like the point of having Gabe is like, you know, God or the universe can be like, I have this for you. So then you have like something that's beautiful and nice in front of you. Mm -hmm. And so how do you, how do you have that? How do you trust the unseen when you're seeing something right here that's like saying that looks right. like what you want? So um, 
I don't really know how she's going to navigate it. I think that she does love Gabe. You know, they were together since my backstory that they were together since college. You know, right. They, they had great chemistry. Yeah, yeah. Like they're like they were like solid. Um, and I think that he's just being patient with her. He's thinking that's like something that she's just going through, you know, and that she'll come back to him. And as for Jewel, I, it's hard because they, they've been together, like they've grown up together as adults, you know? So, right. Like he didn't do anything wrong. It wasn't like he cheated on her or, you know, it's nothing like that. So it's like, it's hard. I think for her also to disengage. And Jennifer, as you playing Kimmy and her best friend, what kind of support, <laughs> if, this was, if this was real life, what kind of conversation would you have had with Jewel looking at Gabe? The but you pull it to the side. Same thing that she just said, what is wrong with you, woman? Look at him. He loves God. He is sexy. I'm pretty sure he smells like vanilla. Okay. Girl. Like girl. Come you wake up. Wake up. I mean, I want to know, Tamala. I want to know that scene. How did he smell like? Like honey? Like what? <laughs> I don't remember what he smelled like. <laughs> he smells like broken dreams. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> we all we all smelled really good because we had like scented oils on. They really, really right. good scented oil. So we all smelled like delicious. Wow. He smelled like he smelled like I want to be homeless. That's I just <laughs> just you know, it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> oh my goodness. I just hope Caleb is everything <laughs> that she needs to throw it all away, just risk it all. But you know what? They always say, God, you, if you trust him, he always has something better for you. So oh, I'm gonna trust, I'm gonna trust God for Jewel. <laughs> she's gonna need it. She's gonna need it. When you, look at, when you look at Gabe and you look at Jewel, Right. Part of me was like, is she really understanding what God's telling her? Because that also happens right. when you get messages from the divine. We don't always interpret them correctly. And I've made that mistake before. And mm -hmm. so that's why I have that fear as well. Is like maybe Jewel just isn't really hearing what God's saying. And she's like running a mile a minute without really right. the information that she should be doing X, Y, and Z. You know? I don't know mm -hmm. if you guys relate to that, you know? So with t so another question, um, Kwame, even though he's not here, he seems to be like he has a little crush on Jewel because every time she mentions her soulmate or she mentions, you know, something else, he's always, you know, trying to throw a little bone to her. I don't know, being a little shady, right? Being like a hater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that Kwame does have some feelings that he hasn't expressed to Jewel. And I think it's hard for him. Be yeah, go ahead. Because I thought the character was gay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thought the character was gay, but the way that he's, he's, he could be bisexual or whatever the case may be, but he's giving, like, if, you know, whatever you need, Jewel, you don't need to be looking for a soulmate. I'm right here. So I'm anxious to see how he's going to react when Jewel gets closer to being in the same vicinity of Caleb and all the shenanigans because friends, you know, on different levels act certain ways when they're jealous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So I'm anxious to see how that's going to play out. And I'm anxious to see how Kimmy's going to act when she gets closer to um, Caleb because she's dealing with this, with her relationship, but then she sees possibly Jewel getting all the things that she's, you know, manifesting. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering how mm -hmm. how Kimmy is going to react to you know when your best friend finds the love of her life and she sacrificed so much to get there. I wonder how Kimmy's going to either self sabotage or um, you know be happy for. Her. Right. What are your thoughts? 
I, I, that's a tough one because there she is in this abusive relationship that you don't know what's going to happen to her or when right. how she's going to leave that relationship. And then here comes, mm -hmm. you, you know, daydreaming about this guy and I'm telling her he doesn't exist, they were gay, and all of a sudden he appears. It's like, what about, what about me? Right, what about right. What I want? What, where is that going to come from? And then, you know, you know Caleb has these friends that, that they're not good. They're, they're... Ooh, maybe maybe Kimmy's gonna be with one of his friends. <gasps> is Kimmy gonna hook up with like Josiah? What? <laughs> is that what's gonna happen? <laughs> we have no idea what's happening. Actually, I don't even think Tamil has written season two yet. <laughs> I don't even think she. Has. I just I just got a feeling that when they all mess together, that Josiah is gonna see Kimmy and be like. But he he's is gonna want to change his little raggedy ways. He's a dog. Well, you saw him at the party. I saw him, but I just feel like he's gonna see Kimmy and be like, <laughs> yeah. "Yo, Jewel, Caleb, hook me oh. up." Oh Lord, oh God, that's oh, gonna be crazy. Time. That's gonna be crazy. That is. I, 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 I just got a feeling. I just got a feeling that this this triangle and this. You know, group of friends are all going to be intertwined, yeah, yeah, yeah. hooking up. I don't know about that. I feel that. like that <laughs> because I I feel like the closer that Jewel gets to um, Caleb by her manifesting all of these things that you know how friends do whenever they're manifesting. Like you could say, for instance, like, oh, I you know I wish I could have this from Sadie's Spins, and I'm going to manifest this. And at first, your friends are just like. You know, she's a little cuckoo. She's whatever. And then when she, when they see the steps coming, they're gonna be like, you know what? I need to manifest too. Mm -hmm. Jewel, yeah, can you put your hands on me? Because I know what you got going on is working. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I want to touch on. Um, if he learns how to wait for her, maybe if he learns how to wait for me, because she's gonna have to heal a little bit. Absolutely. If she's out of the Absolutely. Because you don't know if she's going to be out, rescued, or, or what, what's going to happen to her. I think she's going to be rescued. You no, know, you don't know that. So. I, feel, I feel in my heart she's going to be rescued. Aww. And it'll probably be Josiah. Because <laughs> <laughs> the, dog, the dog has to get a trainer. The <sighs> dog has to get a trainer. <sighs> I love That's that. just me. <laughs> That's just me. That's just me. I want to, before you move on, though, I want to talk about Kwame. You mentioned that you thought Kwame was gay. And mm -hmm. we don't talk about his sexuality because that was on purpose. A lot of times right. we have, like, this picture of what it means to be masculine or to be heterosexual, especially in the first black man. So mm -hmm. it's kind of, like, ambiguous. He's, I, I right. he's bisexual, but um he's ambiguous in that way. And I kind of wanted to keep that going and have people questioning, like, is he into Jewel? Is he straight? Is he not? You know? Right. But I'm just assuming that because he's so like, and, and I could be wrong, and this is just my opinion, when you have someone that is so like super close and listens, because I have male best friends, and they don't listen to the shenanigans of, they only listen surface level of what I got going on if I'm involved with whatever. But with Kwame, he seems like if Jewel calls him, he'll come over there with the tea and the rub down and just talk her off the ledge or he's always there for her shenanigans. Yeah. Yeah. So he could, you know, he could be, you know, very in tune with who he is, but I thought he was until he started trying to throw it at Jewel. And then I was like, Oh, that's a possibility. That's a possibility. I love it. I love it. A whole mess. So with, Caleb. With Caleb, he is going through his thing with his um, ex-girlfriend popping back into the scene. Yeah. What, what, why, I know everything on your, you know, journey to find your soulmate, but why um, are you, why did you write Caleb as a character, in my opinion, that seems so, um, What's the word I'm looking for? He seems so lost, I think, mm. or all over, the, like somewhat lost all over the place. And his friends are just like, okay, you know, 
what do you got going on? Like, you are having these issues with your dreams, you know, you're acting out out of your character. Why did you feel like that would be a perfect, um, I guess, yin to the yang as far as Jules' um, journey to find her soulmate? I guess, like, in real life, I'm sure a lot of women can relate to this. We're like, where's my husband? Where's my man? And they always say, oh, he's working on himself. That's mm -hmm. a bit lie. <laughs> you know? And so in this case, we see that. We see that her soulmate can't come to her because he has some things that he has to actually work through. And if they work right. prematurely, I think it would be a disaster. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why we're seeing that. Because a lot of women, I, even myself, I'm like, where is he? Where is he? And it's like he has his own stuff that he has to sort through and, and sort out and prepare for mm -hmm. so he can be ready for her, to receive her. So are you able to, I know you're not, I know you're able to, but do you want to? <laughs> Give us a little, you know, like a little, I don't know, a little appetizer for episode four. And for an and, and, you know, you know, the little, <laughs> something that's going to be like some tea on, <laughs> on Angela and her shenanigans because she is my namesake, you know, <laughs> and I know, and Angela is always here for the shenanigans. So can you give us a little, you know, not too much, but just a little, for real? Yeah. We are going to see a little bit more as to, as to, well, we, well, Angela will make her confession and share more in a few more episodes, but I guess episode mm -hmm. four, she just, you'll see how she uses her, tries to use her sexuality and her sensuality to disarm a man. I'll say that. Mmm. Mmm. Except how beautiful so you know, we this thing is. How beautiful she is. It's incredible with that dress. I don't know who picked yeah, that dress, but that dress was like. Yeah, that's her dress. Yeah. Oh. Her amazing dress. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, women, we sometimes we try to use our, our womanly wiles to, like, you know, disarm a man. And we'll see. If Absolutely. For that. Absolutely. Well, I just want to thank both of you for coming on. I think this, oh, this web series has just given me so much life. So much life. It's wonderfully written. Um, it's so amazing. And if you guys have not seen episode one or episode two, y'all need to catch up because episode four is going to be on point. So thank you guys for tuning into our little, you know, catch up, a little wind down if you were drinking wine. And we will see y'all next week. Thank you for tuning in for Bubbly Brown. And I'm Angela Yvonne, your host, and we will see you soon. Ah. Uh -huh.